Okay, so our project has now opened. So F7 again to build. So we will generate our binary file. There we go, zero where is zero one is. So if I now go project, download, download active application. So I now program my new update to the software into the device. So my PC has just detected again, so it knows that there's something connected there. So if I now reset my target device and I will see that I have uh, two LEDs now, a red LED lit and a green LED flashing. So the green LED blinking is the app task. The red LED is telling me that my USB is connected or my USB is disconnected. So if I disconnect my USB cable, my red LED will go off. So I've disconnected it to my laptop. If I reconnect my micro USB again, my red LED comes back on again. So that's telling me now that the different tasks in the operating system are now running uh, correctly. So that's section two complete. Step three is now to add the file system. So we need the application to be able to open and close the audio.wav file uh, from within the RTOS. So, so the FAT file system has to run locally on board the microcontroller. So standard C libraries um, don't cover this inside an MCU. On the PC, it does. So that's how we've been accessing the file up to now. But these particular functions are not native into the MCU or embedded C uh, standard libraries, stdio.h. So this is why we've got to add the FATFS system. So all this does, it's a Windows compatible file system that's just designed to run on a microcontroller. There's a user manual already generated for developing applications using the CubeMX and FATFS. And there is also the FATFS project homepage where you can find extra information out about the FATFS structure. So we now go back into our configuration tab of our CubeMX environment and we now enable the FATFS as one of our middlewares. So if I go back to our Cube environment, I now go, I'm on the configuration tab already. I now want to add the FATFS user defined. You can see it's now appeared as an available middleware for our project. So, so now we need to go and configure our FATFS middleware. So if we open our FATFS and we go into the configuration, we need to make sure that certain things are matching our pre-written application code. So I will go into the FATFS and we need to make sure that Latin one windows is the code page, which is correct. The use long file names needs to be disabled, which is correct. And the long file name Unicode needs to be ANSI OEM, which is correct. So all of those, uh, parameters are already correct, so we don't have to make any changes there. If we scroll a bit further down to the physical device parameters, we need to make sure that we're matching the sector size for our quad SPI memory. 
So we need to make sure our sector size is correct. So we need to set it to 4096. And we need to make sure the minimum one is set to the correct size, which again is 4096. So that's all we need to do for the definition of our FATFS. So we can OK that screen. So what we have to do with the FATFS, this is so that we can um, not have access by two different pieces of hardware, or sorry, two different applications to one piece of hardware. So we now need to use the mutex, which is part of the operating system, so that each application or each task within the application can use one physical piece of hardware. So there's no way that um, you would be able to get both tasks using the same item at the same time. So the mutex helps us to control which task is using the physical hardware. So in a standard application here, the USB will grab the mutex Therefore, the USB application can now use the resource, which is the Quad SPI hardware. When the app task wants to use that same piece of hardware, there's no mutex for it to grab, so it has to sit and wait for the mutex. Uh, when the USB task releases the mutex, when it's finished using the piece of hardware, uh, the mutex becomes available, then the waiting task can automatically then grab that mutex and then that task can access the physical piece of hardware. So, and when the app task is finished, it will then also release the mutex. So this is how you use one piece of hardware without conflict uh, from two different tasks within a system. So, so now we need to configure this in the free RTOS to make sure that this is all set up correctly. So we now need to go back into the free RTOS and go into the timers and semaphores section. So this is where the mutexes are located in the RTOS. And we need to add a mutex. So called QSPI mutex. So if we go into our free RTOS, we need to go into timers and semaphores, and we need to add a new mutex. So it was QSPI mutex with a capital M. And then OK that. So that's our mutex added to the system. So that's all we need to do now. So have a QSPI mutex. So we now can say apply and OK. And we can now go and generate code again. So again, the warning is there about the SysTick timer. So we say yes again. So we'll get that warning every time because we're configured to use the SysTick timer and not another one with time base. As before, we need to apply a patch again. So, so we will um, close this instance for now so that we can go and apply the patch to our code as we have done in the past. Uh, so this one is going to add two .c files for the free RTOS. So we've modified the free RTOS to add the mutex. And the user disk IO is for the FATFS so that we can access the, uh, the storage system structure that we want to use in the Quad SPI. So if we go back to our patch and we can copy these two files across to our working folder. What's added inside the disk IO 
is the all the initialization and read and write functions for the application to contact the file structure that's in the QSPI. So these are all the new instructions now that we have available to us because we've added the fat FS into the system. So when we connect it to the system and generate it, we will get a new file on our disk to say that fat FS is okay. So that's all it's going to do. It's just going to write a text file to our disk to say that the fat FS is running correctly. So let's go and copy our two files across. <clears throat> 